Hi, my name is Christina Fuss. I'm the Section Chief of Cardiothoracic Imaging at OHSU in Portland, Oregon, and I will be talking about tubes and lines on chest x-rays today. Talking about monitoring and support devices, we have devices that supply the airway, such as endotracheal tubes and tracheostomy tubes. We have vascular um, devices, arterial and venous catheters, and we have enteric, nasogastric, and feeding tubes. Due to the brevity of the presentation, I will focus my attention to the vascular devices. Central venous catheters. Where should they be? The tip should be central to the venous valves in the SVC. The origin of the SVC is usually to the right of the midline in the first intercostal space. The lower SVC has a lower thrombosis rate. What do we want to look out for in the setting of central venous catheters? Well, first of all, aberrant placement, which happens in up to one third of the cases. We are evaluating for pneumothoraces and for mediastinal or extrapleural hematoma. Sometimes we're asked to evaluate for thrombus, which is more common in females than males, and it happens more commonly with lines on the left than on the right. These are two cases with two normally positioned central venous catheters, both approaching from, a right, from an internal jugular vein. The radiograph to your left is a normal right internal jugular vein. The radiograph to your right is a normal left internal jugular vein. Notice how the right internal jugular venous catheter courses downward to the level of the cavoidal junction, whereas the left internal jugular vein catheter first has to cross midline over to the confluence of the right and left brachiocephalic veins and then course downward to the expected location of the cavoatrial junction. This is a patient who has bilateral subclavian central venous catheters. It is a very sick patient with extensive ground glass and consolidative opacities bilaterally. The patient has a tracheostomy tube and a feeding tube. Notice how the catheter on the left stays below the clavicle and courses leftward to the expected location of the SVC. The right subclavian catheter, however, crosses the clavicle and courses cephalat to the clavicle and then crosses over the midline with the trajectory to the left. It is imperative, imperative to recognize that the right-sided subclavian catheter crosses over the clavicle which is a typical appearance of an intra-arterially positioned catheter. The subclavian vein stays below the clavicle. The subclavian artery extends above the clavicle. This is a patient who received a right internal jugular central venous catheter. And as mentioned before, these catheters should generally course downward to the level of the cavoatrial junction on the right side of the spine. However, this catheter crosses midline and courses downward on the left side. This ended up being an intra-arterial positioned catheter that needed to be removed with the guidance and assistance of vascular surgery. How about this catheter? This is a patient who received a left upper extremity peripheral inserted catheter or PIC. And you can see that the catheter courses underneath the clavicle and stays on the left side. Could this be a normal positioned catheter? Could this patient have a variable anatomy that would explain this? Well, we happen to have a CT of that patient. We did not obtain the CT to assess the location of the catheter, but the patient needed a CT anyway. As you can see, the catheter courses in, a, in an accessory vessel that is lateral to the left of the three supraaortic branch vessels and then eventually connects to a very large coronary sinus which extends into the right atrium. This is a patient with a left-sided SVC, which is a normal variant, and left-sided SVCs drain into the coronary sinus. So in this case, this catheter was perfectly positioned. Notice on this radiograph how this catheter takes a course medial and rightward, but stays underneath the catheter. Again, this is a patient with a left-sided SVC. 
These are axial and coronal images of a patient with bilateral SVC, the white depicting the right SVC, the green depicting the left SVC, and you can clearly see that the left SVC drains into the heart via the coronary sinus. The next patient has bilateral internal jugular venous catheters. The right one dives down correctly along the right paravertebral border and terminates at the expected location of the keyboidal junction. The left one never crosses midline and courses along the expected course of the descending aorta. This again was an intraarterially positioned catheter that needed to be moved with the help of vascular surgery. How do we prove aberrant placement with intraarterial position? The best modality to do that is assessment for of blood gas since pressures can be unusually low on patients who are hemodynamically unstable. How about this patient? This patient has a right internal jugular pulmonary arterial catheter, which is appropriately positioned. But the patient also has a left upper extremity pick, and you can see that this catheter clearly courses above the clavicle and then dives down on the left. As I mentioned, if a catheter crosses above the clavicle, it is not with an intravenous location. This again was an intra-arterial placement of a peripheral catheter and had to be removed with um, careful guidance by vascular surgery. Why is that? This is a coronal rendering of a patient to depict the location of the subclavian vein. The subclavian vein clearly stays below the clavicle at all times, whereas the subclavian artery arches over the clavicle and extends cephalat to the clavicle. How about this next patient? Again, a left upper extremity pick stays below the clavicle, but then dives down on the left and has this funny bump at the location of the second arrow from the top. Pick catheters are very, very flimsy, and they will not obtain a shape unless the vessel that they're in makes them do so. So why does he have that bump there? Well, again, we happen to have a CT on that patient. Again, we did not obtain it for that purpose. And this catheter ended up being in an anterior left parasternal vein. This is a catheter that is in the internal mammary vein on the left. And depending on what purpose this catheter is um, determined, it can be left there, but it certainly is intravenous. How about this patient? In this case, we have a right upper extremity pick, and you can clearly see that the catheter takes the normal course underneath the clavicle, but then has a kink with a funny arch, and it dives down on the mid line of the vertebral column. This catheter took its course into the azygous vein, which is depicted on the image to the top right, and the azygous then continues downward pre-vertebral. How about this patient? This is a patient in the ICU. The radiograph to, the, to your left is the initial radiograph, and the radiograph to your right is after administration, um, after he received a left subclavian central venous catheter. You can clearly see the difference in the mediastinal width density, and contour. This patient developed a large mediastinal hematoma due to placement of the central venous catheter. However, the catheter was appropriately positioned intravenously. Our next case was a patient who received a right internal jugular catheter for contrast administration for a CT scan. Now the question is, where is this catheter? On the initial radiograph to your left, the catheter was thought to be a little deep, but the catheter also flared outward, which was noted, but no comments were made. The recommendation was to retract the catheter ever so slightly and, and to repeat the radiograph, which is the radiograph on your right. You can see the catheter has been retracted, but the tip still flares outward, just like a bell-bottom pair of jeans from the 70s. Remember, catheters do not obtain shapes other than the vessels that they're in. Nonetheless, the catheter was deemed appropriately positioned and the patient received intravenous contrast, so we thought.
This is the CT that was obtained after administration, and you can clearly see that not only was the catheter in the pleural space, but the entire contrast was instilled into the pleural space, and the patient also had a pneumothorax. In summation, the lower SVC or the chemoatrial junction is the goal uh, in terms of location. The line can be in the correct vein in a correct location. In a correct vein with sort of a suboptimal location if it's too deep, for example, within the right atrium. The line can be in an incorrect vein, such as the azagous or collateral vein. And the line can be in an incorrect vessel, such as intraarterial, which should always prompt a vascular surgeon consult and an intraarterial catheter should never just be removed. Or last but not least, not in a vessel at all. Thank you very much.